Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello and welcome to Finding Respect in the Chaos. I am Cynthia Lee Sinclair and I am here with Jade and Jasmine Baker. I'm so glad that you guys have come Thank to share having. all of the Thank stuff you. that you do. You do such amazing work and I'm really, really honored that you came on the show to share some of it with us. Um, I believe, Jasmine, that you have a program called GEMS. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about what that is? It's a program for girls and STEM, right? Yes. So GEMS is Girls Empowered and Mentored for Success. It's a STEM-based organization for girls. It's faith-based, of course. I'm an engineer, and I'm very passionate about making sure that girls have um, STEM-based in their um, careers, you know, at least that they get involved in it. Because as you know, right. Cynthia, right now, only 10% of the girls are very interested in STEM. Now STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, right? Exactly. Just for, just for those that don't know exactly what STEM is, I had to look it up, okay. <laughs> exactly. So right now, the girls that are in school, only 10% of them are interested wow. in STEM-based subjects. So I felt compelled to have something created, my nonprofit, to get them interested in those types of subjects. That's fascinating. I love that. Thank you. I'm glad you do that because it, it's important that we get more women out there mm -hmm. in these fields exactly, so that we can really change what is going on in this culture and stuff. Okay, now, Jade, I want you to tell me a little bit about what you are doing because what you're doing is really exciting. It's with human trafficking, right? Yes, it is. Can you explain a little bit about what that is and what it entails and, and how you got involved in it to begin with? So I work with an organization called Ho'olanapua, and there it dedicates the renewal of youth being exploited to our islands. Uh -huh. And as their first ever state teen educational advocate, I just go into the school systems and educate our keiki about what's going on. That's awesome. As it directly affects them. Right. So I originally got started with Ho'olanapua with the annual Pearl Gala that was held in 2014 in my freshman year. And I went with my mom, we went into the art exhibit where it conveyed a young girl that had been sex trafficked. Oh, wow. And everything that she'd have to go through. So it was visually there. You could see the clothes, the oh, lipstick, the shoes oh, that she'd have to wear. And I was really shocked because I didn't know that it was going on in our islands. And I right, thought, right I thought here it was in Hawaii, like, yeah. taken. And mm -hmm. I, was, I just automatically assumed that she was protective over me. And I was like, uh, mom. <laughs> but <laughs> good job, mom. That's what mom's yeah. supposed to do. Exactly. <laughs> but after I found out that this could happen to anyone that I may know at Radford, right. I decided right. that I wanted to take a stand and be a voice to the voiceless. Good for you. Yeah. I love that. You know, I just recently went around the world and I was interviewing people and I was studying how different cultures deal with domestic violence and wow. child abuse. But when I got out there, every single agency that I went to was just slammed, overwhelmed wow. with human trafficking issues. I bet. And so I still, but I thought it was Europe. I thought mm -hmm. it was maybe India or, mm -hmm. you know, the Middle East. I don't think of it as being here in Hawaii. Right. And yet it's really high. There's like a 30% mm -hmm. um, risk factor or 30%. I oh, can't yeah. remember the exact statistics. Like with the, with the teens, <laughs> tell them a little bit about the teens, Jade. Runaways. So 33% um, of Hawaii's runaways get approached within the first... 28 hours of them being on the streets for sexual coercion. Mm -hmm. So this presents a really big issue for Hawaii for sex trafficking. Sure. In the first, that soon, in the first day, there are 48 been, hours, my bad. 48, but, still, yes, but yeah. in the first two days, yeah. what's mm -hmm. the difference? I mean, first yeah. two days and they're already getting wow. approached for a sexual favors. And not only that, one big thing, and me and my daughter converse about this a lot, is, and most people don't know this, that Hawaii was the last state to pass the sexual um, trafficking law. Wow, And that's a really? big thing. It passed in 2016, and most people don't know that. So um, that's very important for us to know. Sure it is. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, why were we the last ones? Wait, usually we're up in the forefront of this kind <laughs> oh, of stuff, yeah. you know? But I think people don't really want to see it as being such a big problem. Exactly. But it really is. You know, let's um, let's talk a little bit more specifically about yes. what human trafficking is. Absolutely. For, for those of the you know viewers out there that don't know exactly what it is, could you explain a little bit more about the specifics for mm -hmm. us? Definitely. So if we could go to the first slide. So sex trafficking occurs when a person is induced to perform a commercial sex act through force, fraud, or coercion. And what the act specifically is geared towards, it's geared towards people under 18. So if anyone under 18 can prove that they were forced into sexual exploitation or just force, fraud, or coercion in general, they are able to go through court with it. Oh, and wow. not be charged as a prostitute. Right, because they're a minor. Exactly. And shoot, they should charge the people that are doing it to them. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah, not the victims. Wait exactly. a minute. Especially the underage ones. That's just exactly. insane the to think vulnerable. that would happen. Mm -hmm. Because right. of, the thing about it is a, a minor is not giving consent. A minor is not wanting to prostitute themselves. Right, they can't give consent. Exactly. Right? By law, they cannot give exactly. consent. Even if they say yes, mm -hmm. there are, there's not a, a minor prostitute. Right. Yeah. There's no such thing as a child prostitute. Exactly. I like that. And that's, that's what a we, thing to remember. the message that we send so people know that. There's right. no such thing. Wow, you used to volunteer in the prison, I think, right? Didn't Absolutely, you? and that, that's where my passion came from, Cynthia, is when I was out in the prisons teaching and volunteering, um, I would run across girls as, you know, we would um, take them through counseling sessions that had ended up in prison, and through those sessions, you learn that, hey, they had been trafficked, or they had wow. some type of experience in that area, and, they got charged with some type of prostitution. And you're like, okay, wait a minute. And at that time, remember, I said 216 was when the law. Oh, right. So mm -hmm. the law wasn't even there to back them up yet. Right. So now they're getting charged with prostitution. And you're like, whoa. And I sat there, kind of took him back. And I said, hey, after seeing so many cases, I said, you know what? I got to do something about it. Kind of like you. my daughter, she she goes to this pro gala, she steps into the life of a girl that's been trafficked, and she wants to to do something about it. There's an awakening that happens. For right. me, you know, I'm counseling. And I'm like, hey, I gotta I gotta do something about this. I gotta make a change here, right. you know, and help you. these girls. Right. Good for you. And we just, we need everyone to be doing that same exactly. thing. That's why I'm so glad you guys came on the show today, mm -hmm. because we really need to get the word out. Absolutely. So that people understand that this is a problem right here in Hawaii. It's yeah. not just something that is far away from mm -hmm. us. It's something right here, right, right. here. You walk down in Waikiki, mm -hmm. and let me tell you, you will see plenty of girls, and you can tell what they're doing. Exactly. And they're obviously underage. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to be out there. Mm -hmm. There are so many homeless now, too, oh, absolutely. that puts them, and I would think at that would puts them super high risk. At risk, definitely. They do anything for money, mm -hmm. especially children. They right. don't know where they're going to go. They don't know what they're going to eat. Mm -hmm. right. So in order to fulfill those needs, they do anything. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're easy prey for someone who comes along and says, mm -hmm. hey, man, look, I'm going to feed you and Absolutely. give you a place, a roof over your head. And oh, yeah. I know in, when I was going around the world, I was able to um, interview a nun at the Vatican wow. and talking about what they're doing about human trafficking. And I really love the way that they are just boots on the ground, getting out there with oh, people, awesome. telling them not to fall prey, because that's really all we can do. It's hard, so hard to extract them once they get in it. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you can stop them from going to begin with, Absolutely. I think that's like where we can really start to make some changes. And and that's all about awareness. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. And getting the word out. So I'm so proud of you. It's, it's amazing that at your young age, you are already in the process of doing this. Oh, so absolutely. hey, let's talk a little bit about um, the the specifics of, you know, what what makes up somebody that is is a trafficker, not mm -hmm. necessarily mm -hmm. trafficked, but somebody who's a trafficker, Absolutely. so that maybe the people that are watching will know what to watch for, yeah. okay. right? Mm -hmm. So the grooming tactics. The grooming the, tactics, like that's the one. Yeah, I knew there was, a, I knew there was yeah. a name for it, I just couldn't come up with it. So I think we have a slide for that yes, too, don't we? we? Do. 
So you want to say this? Oh, absolutely. Some of the recruitment and grooming tactics, you know, um, the changes in behavior that you can look for is absences from school. You know, the dress could change. You maybe um, the person showed up at school and they were very conservative in their dress, and now the, the dressing is more provocative, or even an attitude change. Maybe now um, they were really nice, and now they're becoming very nasty in their attitude. Maybe they're starting to have truancies from school, and it's just unexplained. Maybe they're showing up with more money in their pockets. Maybe mm -hmm. they have a second cell phone. Maybe that second cell phone is not because they can afford it, but maybe the trafficker has given them a second cell phone to contact them. Right. Um, maybe they have a uh, more tattoos and what we like to think of when they have these tattoos it could be a possible branding technique that the uh, trafficker is using maybe they've now branded the victim you know to keep up with that victim and that makes total sense because you know under 18 they can't get a tattoo anyway exactly parental, exactly you know, mm -hmm. uh, as permission so they're obviously getting them illegally and mm -hmm. I think you're probably right it is like a a brand. Exactly. And it kind of ties into the modern day slavery as we would like to call them. Mm -hmm. um, as you look at slavery before, the slave owners would actually brand the slaves right. and kind of brand them with iron and mm -hmm. metal. Now it's just tattoos. Mm -hmm. Right. Same thing, but different. Different um, time period. What you call it? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Wow. And I think you're probably right as far as that branding thing. Mm -hmm. That makes total sense mm -hmm. too, because that way that person knows what that tattoo means. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's this constant reminder. Oh, absolutely. In the back of their head, that's there, which is probably why you see mm -hmm. all kinds of, you know, slides and attitude and mm -hmm. everything else, because they're not happy. Mm -hmm. They know that they're not. <clears throat> you know, maybe in the beginning, there's a little bit of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, it's like new. You get yeah. new money. You get to go yeah. buy new clothes. <laughs> yeah. All that kind of stuff. Hair's so, done. Yeah. Different things. It feels good. Right. So in the beginning, you're like, yeah, this is cool. And yeah. then you realize it's not so cool. Mm -hmm. right? And then you realize that you're stuck. Yeah, you feel like a, you a piece of out. property. Right. You know, and that's why they call it the grooming technique. In the beginning, you know, it's that the you hear two terms used, the lover board technique, or you hear my daughter say the Romeo technique. Ah, and then, right. And then as it, it begins to, to move and we call it seasoning, you know, now as we season her, and then maybe he becomes more of uh, the gorilla technique. He's now starting right. to beat her because he right. needs to uh, create these trauma bonds because now I need you to know that your property, you belong to me. Right. And that second cell phone is that now I begin to manipulate you and control you so you know that you belong to me. You stay right. here. You you no longer can go home and I'll hurt your family if you do. And so, that's, I think, a big thing that mm -hmm. happens too is those threats of if you don't do what I say, I'm going to go. I mean, and that's like classic abuser mentality. Oh, yes is if you don't do what I say, or if you tell anybody what's going on, I'm gonna hurt your mom, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna hurt your brother, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna go get your sister and get her involved. Oh yeah. Or, or something Some like that. Some type of blackmail. Yeah, you know? right. And it's used to isolate the victim. Right. The trafficker wants the victim to feel isolated from their parents because they right. often feel shame. Mm -hmm. right. Shame is a really powerful tool to use sure it is. in order to get that mind control over them. Exactly. And that's a classic abuser across the board technique, mm -hmm. yes. not just the traffickers. Mm -hmm. um, as a, a survivor of child abuse, my, my father used those same techniques. Mm -hmm. um, as a victim of domestic violence, I should say survivor, because I'm not a victim anymore. <laughs> yes. But as a survivor of domestic violence, my ex-husband would do the same thing, yes. would shame me and, so, and make me feel like I wasn't worth anything. And I think that's the first thing that they have to do is break down the other person's self-worth yes. mm -hmm. before they're able to you know, build it back up the other way. Exactly. Right? I think we have a slide about mm -hmm. the, um, the groomers and yeah. stuff too, don't we? Oh no, these are just quick facts. Oh my gosh, those are some crazy thoughts. <laughs> oh yeah. A hundred thousand children exploited in prostitution every year. And that's just an estimate. Mm -hmm. So yep. who knows how many it really is. I'm oh, sure yeah. it's more. They say wow. like every couple of minutes a child is being 
pulled into the sex trafficking ring. And if you notice, it's 12 to 14 in age where the, the children are being exploited. And, and it, that's kind of that vulnerable age where a child is looking for acceptance, where the mind is still right. being developed. So the trafficker can easily deceive you, manipulate you, because mm -hmm. a child is looking for acceptance at that age. Most of right. our children are looking for acceptance. That's, Absolutely they are. That's like the teens. critical stage right there. Mm -hmm. Critical stage right there. And then that's where the trafficker is coming in and, and they're manipulating that child. They're finding them on the internet through social media. And I believe we kind of talked about this um, before we even came on the show. They, they're manipulating them on social media. Right. They, they're looking for that child that's saying, hey, you know, I'm not getting along with my mom. I'm not getting along with my, my dad. And, and they'll, right. you know, they're posing as someone else and saying, hey, I'm not getting along with my mom. I'm not getting along with my dad, too. Right. And I'm really a 14-year-old girl also, but in reality, right. I'm not a 14-year-old you know, girl. Yeah, you're a 40-year-old man. Wow. Listen, we had so much more to talk about. So we got to take a break, and I'm hoping that you guys will stay with us and, and um, be with us when we come right back. We'll just be gone for a minute. Thanks. And aloha, my name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring in the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation. And we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in Uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m., here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Hello, welcome back to Finding Respect in the Chaos. I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and I'm here with Jade and Jasmine Baker, and we are talking about some really important stuff that Hawaii needs to know about. Um, we've got, we got a little video we want to show you. We're talking about human trafficking, and this video is going to give you a little insight into just exactly what's going on with human trafficking here in Hawaii. We're working with what we have, and I was like, what do we have? And she's like, your body. I didn't know about sex trafficking until I was in the middle of it. After a while, you just kind of get used to it. Like, everything that goes around just doesn't seem out, out of ordinary to you. We really believed that she was getting ready to be sold. Brianna comes from a small town, was an A student, did everything you hoped your daughter would do. My dreams were to become a nurse. While I was in high school, I had found a waitressing job. I love school, I love being around my friends, and my science class was like my big thing. These traffickers or pimps, they pretend to be an older boyfriend. And these young girls actually fall in love with these guys and believe that this guy loves them back. He was like 24. He played football at a university. He had bought me some designer jeans and things. Go to like movies and malls, trips, stuff like that. He bought me a dress and some jewelry because like I didn't really have stuff like that. It's important for the pimp or the trafficker to separate these girls from their family and their friends. He really gave me the courage to kind of stand up to my mom. He was like, you know, just kind of keep it on the down low. One day he asks for something, and even though she doesn't want to do it, she's so worried about losing him that she will. And once he's had her do it once, he pretty much can control her from then on. He kept saying that he needed money. I was like, you know, I'll help you or whatever. I made a choice that night, but I found out that they actually had chosen me.
Whew, now that's a video that'll wake you up, right? Oh my goodness, that's exactly. impressive stuff. Mm -hmm. So you know, you know what I was thinking while we were watching that is that um, it's not just girls, it guys that are victims too, right? Boys are victimized also. Absolutely. And, then, and it's not just men that are the traffickers, it's women too, right? Absolutely, 46% are 46 women. 46%? 46%. Yeah. Wow, I wouldn't think it was that high. Oh yes, definitely. <sighs> Most people think it's just men and that's the myth that we like to, to distill so that people right. know that it's 46% women and they're more trusting than men. Right, And sure. the other thing that why the women number is so uh, huge is that it's a lot of the women that were sex trafficked. That's what I was wondering. I was wondering if they were victims to begin with, mm -hmm. and then they just got put in that position to exactly. go get more victims as exactly. opposed to just being one themselves. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine that. The guilt that talk about shame compounded yep. with oh, guilt. Yes. Oh my, I can't even imagine ever coming back out of that. It's like you think that they would leave, but they don't, because mm -hmm. they once that shame gets in, like you were saying, yeah, it's still it, in them. It's it's hard to come out of. Yeah, right? it's not it, that easy. Yeah. It completely changes everything that you know, mm -hmm. and then the shame of you wouldn't want anyone to know that it, right. it, this had happened, mm -hmm. or that you were walking the streets on you were down walking Hotel Street, mm -hmm. you know, at night or something. And then the money in it too. You know, that's the other piece, Cynthia. There, there's money. Right. You know, anywhere there's money and power, you know, people tend to migrate toward it. Sure. Next to guns and drugs, this is what a billion dollar industry. Thirty-two billion dollar industry. Thirty-two billion dollars for yes. sex trafficking. Yes. Wow. Next to guns and drugs. And we like to use this analogy whenever we're discussing this in schools. Look at a gun. You can purchase a gun once and throw it away after. Look at drugs. You can use it once, throw it away after. Mm -hmm. But look at a human being. You can purchase them over and over and yeah. over again. Aww. And profit off of that being multiple that. times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> we need to get respect back in this world, oh, right? Absolutely. You know, when I, I came up with the title for this show, mm -hmm. it wasn't randomly done. You know, I'm really looking for respect. Oh, we got to find respect mm -hmm. out there oh, in this absolutely. chaos because there's Cynthia. just so much chaos. Yes. And I'm afraid that our political climate, unfortunately, right now, is not doing anything to help stop it. Oh. Um, victimizing women it seems to be mm. the part and parcel of what's going on mm -hmm. in yes. Washington right now. And, and it's wild because you see some of them have to step down and they lose their jobs. And then we got one that gets to be president oh. and another one that gets to be on the highest court in our land. Mm -hmm. and, so women's rights are under attack yes, in definitely. many, many ways. Mm -hmm. And we need to join together and work really hard oh, absolutely. to fight against this stuff. We need to get out, get out and vote. Yes. <laughs> get out and vote on Tuesday. Yes. That's a big yes. thing, right? Yes. That's vote. part of it. We can vote some of this out. I know I work the polls every year. I'm working this year too. Are you? Yeah. All right. With my legacy club at Radford. Oh, very cool. Very cool. I think everyone should at least experience it once where you mm -hmm. go out and you yes. volunteer in the polls mm -hmm. and you really get a feel for um, the whole process yes. of it, you know, and I think that's an important thing, especially for somebody young like you. I think that's <laughs> awesome. It's like, you know, after um, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, did I get the name of the right school? Marjorie, was it Stoneman Douglas or the one in Florida where they had the big shooting just not too long ago mm. and all the kids came out, right? And they're still, Florida is huge. I mean, these yes. kids are going everywhere. Vote, vote, vote. If you're 18, boy, you are signed up and you yes. are voting on Tuesday. <laughs> <clears throat> which I think is really important. Absolutely. Here in Hawaii, we have one of the lowest turnouts for votes. Mm -hmm. um, the 2016 election, there was almost nobody. I mean, I sat there all day, and it's a really, it's a big polling spot right. um, where I am out in Haula. That's a really big spot where we have a lot of people that live out there and not a lot of polls, so there's a lot of people come there. Oh, right. There's almost nobody. It was just crazy. There wasn't any lines. There wasn't, and I thought, what? Wow. You know, and in this democratic state, I mean, it's like <laughs> yes. we really need to get our, our voices out there mm -hmm. because right now, unfortunately, the Republicans are really making changes that are going to hurt us long term.
And I think it's important for everyone to stand up and use their voice. Right. In whatever way. And I don't mm -hmm. mean to just come against Republicans because, um, I'm just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want division. I want us all to come yeah, together. And exactly. I want to go back to the way it was when um, we could all have differences of opinion, but we could all sit down and talk about it. Mm -hmm. And now it seems like the shift has come to we have differences of opinions and we can't speak to mm -hmm. each other anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that you know, puts a silence blocker on every subject, including this one. Oh, yeah. Right? So it's like, yeah, we don't, we don't want that. We want everyone's voice to be heard. Absolutely. And, and I think that's such an important thing. I think we have another slide we can show, right, um, about exactly who the traffickers are mm -hmm. and, and exactly yes. what they do. Let us know about that. Mm -hmm. So the previous video that you saw was called Chosen, and it's by the Shared Hope International Movement. And it their focus is geared towards human trafficking on the international scale, so not okay. just the U.S., which is perfect for me, in my opinion. But <laughs> Chosen is a perfect example of the Romeo technique, which is what my mom said before. Right. And okay. the Romeo technique is basically where the trafficker is presenting themselves as a love interest. And it's a perfect technique for especially children my age that are looking for acceptance, right. love, and they just want yeah, to feel sure. happy. And special. Yeah, and special. Right. They want exactly. to feel important. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. And they want to be heard. So I imagine that Romeo at first is very, He's like, you know, yes. listens Issues. and compliments yes. them and tells them what they want to hear. Oh, yeah. And buying and showering them with, with gifts. gifts. In the beginning. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Until it turns after you're already hooked. Exactly. But if it's too good to be true, and it's probably not it's probably true. Not probably true. Not true. <laughs> that is, and that's probably one of the best things you could say. You know, we don't have much time left. Mm -hmm. So do you guys have, do you have one last thing that you'd like to tell our viewers today? Definitely. So if you would go to the next slide, mm -hmm. it's the national emergency number. So up on the top, you have the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. That's presented right there. The National Human Trafficking Hotline. And just 911, if you feel that you're in a tough position, just you can never fail with 911. Right. Absolutely. 911 is go straight to 911 mm -hmm. and yes. you'll have a policeman show up. And mm -hmm. now they've got laws that will help support these kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing. Yes. I want to thank you guys so much for, first off, just what you're doing. Is that we need more people like you. Thank so you. hopefully you're going to go out there and multiply. <laughs> Maybe just go on you guys and get about 25 of you out there. Um, I would like to offer whatever I can do to help if there's no. anything you guys need. And I want, you to, yeah. I want you to come back, too. We're because letting I want us you to, on. I want you to come back and I want you to keep us posted about what you're doing, how it's going, where you're going from there, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff like that. So oh, I just want to thank, thank you so you. much, Jade, Jasmine. Thank I look you. forward to having you guys back again. And I want to thank everybody else for coming in and joining us here today. I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair. This is Finding Respect in the Chaos on Think Tech Hawaii, and I hope you'll join me again for my next show.